All right, guys. So today I'm going to do another uh, helmet paint removal. Now, uh, just kind of a backstory. This uh, this is a World War II uh, M1 helmet, and um, it's actually a uh, Schluter. And um, I saw this helmet on eBay um, a few days ago, and um, you know I placed a bid on it and everything. Come to find out, the person that was selling it lives about 30 minutes away from me. And uh, I, I won this helmet, and uh, they shipped it, and I got it within like a day. Because, I mean, we're that close, right? And uh, what wanted me to bid on this helmet, and the reason I hoped that I would win it, is because I, I started looking through the pictures, and, uh, you know, it's it's it, the paint's chipping really bad in places and different stuff. But one of the pictures showed this right here. There is some white paint underneath all this green over paint. And like I said, it's chipping real bad. And uh, it's been painted maybe more than once. You see all how it's cracking and chipping. And so what I'm going to do, see there's something under there. And so I'm really excited. I'm hoping, you know, this could be, I mean, this is a very awesome uh, helmet. There's no telling what I'm going to uncover. And so I'm really excited to do that. Those of you who've been watching these videos before, you know I use this citrus strip. This stuff is awesome, but always take it slow because it can be messy. And uh, I always recommend, you know, using gloves and a respirator and somewhat be in a ventilated area to protect your breathing and then you know a rag to kind of wipe away but I normally say start maybe on the side of the helmet or the back or the top instead of directly right in the front and take take it slow if you start getting nervous or whatever you know then I would just stop you know don't you don't want to ruin something underneath that's a good thing underneath all this over paint and so I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, I use these toothbrushes and I dip it in the citrus strip and brush it in and let it sit for a little while and then I basically just start wiping away with the rag so let's see what happens let's get going all right so as you see I've used the toothbrush and kind of brushed around in a circular motion almost like you're brushing your teeth or something hopefully everybody brushes their teeth that wouldn't be a good thing if you didn't but so you just let it sit for a while and just start wiping away with the rag like I said it can be very messy so you know make sure you have plenty of rags and everything and um, like I said, this had all the chipped paint and everything. So this side of the helmet isn't all that going to be all that probably that nice. But I'm really curious to, when I get around to hear what I'm going to uncover. Hopefully it's something really awesome. But anyways, I'm going to let this sit, you know, and I'm going to keep going. So let's see what uh, see what uh, shows up. All right, so I've been at it for a while. And like I said, I already knew this one side wasn't going to be all that great because it was mostly down to the bare metal anyways. Just a little bit of white flaking there, but you know that couldn't really be helped. But I started moving around the back of the helmet, and if you can see that, I'm uncovering some red paint. So this helmet's been painted probably two or three times, but if you can see that right in there, there's something red, and maybe even there. So I'm just gonna let it sit for a while and do its thing, and you know keep applying it and everything, and breaking down these thick level uh, layers of paint. And there could be something really good there. And I'm slowly making my way around the side to see what this is here. I'm going to take it slow for sure. There ain't no telling what I'm going to uncover. You know, it's really exciting doing this. So um, let's keep going. All right, so I've been at this for a while. And one thing I wanted to tell you all is take your time. You know, don't get in a hurry. Some of these take a while. You know what I mean? Depending on how many times it's been painted. But you can see there's red under there. And look. I'm uncovering more red if you can see that it almost looks like there's a red there could be a red band that goes around the back of the helmet around to the side maybe like I said unfortunately that that was all chipped away real bad but um, if you can see it though there's something red and it looks like it is a red band that wraps around now most of you probably be wondering why I don't start here you know a lot of times when you're excited about something I mean, you can be overly excited and end up doing, you know, more harm than good. So I wanted to take my time making my way around here because it's obvious there's something there. But um, I'm good making my way there. Hopefully I'll be there in a little while. But I'm just going to keep, you know, applying the citrus strip and brushing it in and letting it sit and wiping away. And uh, we'll see what we come up with. Let's keep going. All right, so I've been at this for a while now, and you see it's got the red stripe. But uh, like I said, you got to be careful with this citrus strip because it'll take it all the way down to the bare metal. And you see, like down here and up here, which this didn't affect anything, but a little bit of the the red started getting uh, 
worn out you know pretty bad so i just stopped that's why i was saying sometimes you just got to stop you know i mean it's obvious what it is it's a red stripe around the back and then look i'm getting into something right here with red white and blue i'm thinking this i think i know what this might be and if it's what i think it is it's going to be a post world war ii uh like a training decal or, or you know or i'm trying to think the right word for it i'll think of it in a minute but I'm thinking that's what that could be there. We'll see. Um, and then I uncovered this along the front. See, there's a, a red band along the front here. And there's a letter P there. And I believe it's going to be an MP helmet. I guess it, yeah, it looks like I can see the outline of an M underneath the paint still. So it's going to say MP on the front, I'm pretty sure. And it's got a red band. And again, you guys saw this side before I even started. It was already down to the bare metal and chipping bad. So I didn't do that. But... And then around the front, the red. And like I said, you see it's getting, it was getting kind of worn out, so that's, I stopped. You know, that's the best thing to do. But I'm going to keep working this area right here slowly and finish around the front. And let's see how this thing turns out. All right, so y'all ready to see this? Here we go. Here are the results. I was pretty confident it was MP, which, you know, most of you know is military police. You know, I had a red band around there, which, again, I've said it, I think, a couple of times. All this was already chipped down and worn out to the bare metal, unfortunately. There's just a little bit of white right there on the side. And then on the back, you know, it's got the red stripe. And then, look, that's the triangle for armored, which is awesome. That's a good deal, uh, a big deal, good find. And one thing about the MP is, uh, you see, it's missing a chunk in the M. That was already chipped off before I started also, unfortunately, but... It's still a really nice helmet and armored. You know, I uh, actually reached out to a friend of mine. Um, he's a fellow military enthusiast, been collecting for probably 40 years or more. And and uh, he wasn't real sure if this was World War II or maybe Korean War applied, uh, you know, uh, unit markings because he wasn't sure if it had the, if the red band was used during World War II for the armored or not, if it was only you know maybe in Korea. But, um, you know, I removed about, it was probably like at least three or four layers of paint. I mean, this was heavily painted. It had been covered up for years and years, painted over multiple times. And um, I'm really excited about this. I don't even think I told you guys, I only paid $40 shipping and everything for this helmet. And so $40, you know, and now that it's been uncovered MP and, and armored, I mean, this might be a $100 helmet or more to the right person. I mean, who knows? So that is awesome. Another thing I was going to show you is on the inside here... It's actually got a name. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it actually says Robert right there. It says Robert, and unfortunately, the last name is looked like it was a really long last name, but it was already worn out, so there's no way I'd ever know the soldier's full name, but it's definitely Robert something. And uh, if you see in there, the heat stamp is 391A, and it's a, a Schluter. And so this helmet would date, you know, the Schluter doesn't have an official chart like McCord does, but... Uh, 391A would date to late 1944, uh, you know, give or take somewhere around maybe October or November, somewhere in that range is kind of what um, what I would say. And so that would be awesome, you know, if this helmet was used, I'd mentioned to my friend, uh, if it was used in the Bulge or something, you know, the Battle of the Bulge or maybe in, you know, very early 1945, maybe the uh, Remagen Bridge. Uh, you know, most of you guys know I've got a ninth armored World War II veteran fringe, 97. He was in the Bulls and at the bridge also. That would be amazing, you know, if if I could had more history with this. Unfortunately, I can't see the number for the armored unit or any, like, Hell on Wheels or Phantom or whatever at the bottom, unfortunately. And, you know, this decal was already worn out before I even started removing the paint. But, I mean, it's definitely armored. It's not a sticker. It's definitely hand-applied, you know, paint. And so this is a really awesome find, you know, you never know what you're going to uncover, uh, you know, when you start doing something like this. But like I say, you got to be very careful and take it slow because like I said, you see there's some, some bare spots and everything, which looks kind of bad. But I mean, if I hadn't removed the paint, I wouldn't have uncovered that and the, the armored uh, marking which is amazing. So this definitely, you know, increased the value of the helmet, you know, if I was to sell it, which I'm not, but... Anyways, guys, uh, you know, I enjoy making these videos, and um, I hope you guys like it. Sometimes, you know, the helmets turn out better than others, but still, uncovering something like this is, is well worth it. It took me a long time to do it. 
it. And I was very hot and sweaty and everything, but um, it was a lot of fun. And so anyways, guys, thank you for all your support, and uh, I'll be getting back to you soon. So thank you.